My throat, my fucking body's telling me that I'm just gravely fucking up, but I'm gonna just do this because that's who I am. Because you're a showman, Steve. That's who I am. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today, by popular demand, I'm joined by Steve-O. You know him from Jackass and Wild Boys. You can catch him on the stand-up stage, and oh yeah, he has a YouTube channel where he's still doing his Steve-O thing. Casual four million subs, no big deal. Steve-O, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. An honor to be here. You have an incredible pain tolerance, but how are you with hot food specifically? I can't stand eating anything without hot sauce for the most part. But when we get into the zone of fucked up hot. <laughs> Which we do. Right, but I'm gonna play ball as, as much as, until like when, when my butt, when I feel the, it's time to stop, I'm not gonna beat myself up if I do. Don't be a superhero, Steve. Right. It's okay. And we're, just, and, we're just happy that you're at the table. And, and maybe if uh, if I do decline to go to the next hot sauce, maybe I can still take the next salacious, ill-advised question. <laughs> let me let me just burn bridges and fuck shit up with the, the interview. I came here starving. I have not. I had my girlfriend made me uh, avocado toast this morning. Here we are at fucking five in the afternoon. Haven't eaten shit. And then they're already starving. on there. Oh yeah. You don't have to add more unless you want. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'll tell you, I love this shit. You know, the, the doctors say don't fuck with the hot sauce, and I do. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> right off the bat, you're like, oh, I have like an acid reflux thing, and then just pouring <laughs> Valentine on the first one. <laughs> so I want to start by taking it back to the University of Miami. I love it. Because college is very much ground zero for the watch this, hold my beer behavior that you ended up building a career on. Right, uh-huh. If camera phones were around back then, what would be some of the things on your highlight reel? Well, well then I'm sure I would have footage of... Uh, the time when I broke my skull, you know, that's, uh, it kills me. I threw myself off a balcony at the University of Miami. I landed on my face on the concrete below. I broke my uh, cheekbone and I broke seven teeth, 10 stitches in my chin, a concussion and a broken wrist, all in one fall. And I laid there face down with a pool of blood growing around my head. It was a keg party on campus. Everyone was like, wow, he's dead. He's just from faith I wasn't even twitching a finger. And my buddies, they knew that I had the weed in my pocket. They said, if he's not dead, he's going to need that weed. So they came and like pulled it out of my pockets. Like going through my pockets, going through the dead guy's pockets to take his weed. <laughs> it's a sketchy scene if you're just <laughs> walking by and you <laughs> see that go down. <laughs> Right. The next morning, I broke out of the hospital. I, they let me use the phone. I called my buddies at the University of Miami. I said, hey, swing through the ER. Come break me out of here. And I broke out with, in my gown with my butt hanging out. And I went back to the spot where I landed in the blood on the concrete. And I tried to pound a beer. And my sinuses would just fill with blood. And then I'd go, <laughs> like hawking up a loogie. And just spit the blood loogies into the bowl of applesauce, which I couldn't eat. The fact that you're here today, Steve-O, it's a I miracle. Know. I know. <laughs> How the fuck did I survive that? So between Jackass, the movies, Wild Boys, I have a million questions about beanbag shotguns and stapling your uh -huh. nuts to stuff. Whatever you want, man, whatever you want. Do you remember the first time you ever got arrested doing a stunt? I guess the first time I got arrested around a stunt was when I was charged formally with a felony for obscenity in Louisiana for stapling my nutsack to my leg. What do you think's the closest you've ever been to dying on camera? Uh, I'm, I'm so confident that it would be a scuba diving. I just like didn't pay attention when I, they taught me how to scuba dive. I don't even know what country we were in, but I was told the sharks were at the bottom. That's something about it, went all the way to the bottom and then someone was, uh, I felt some grab my fin and they were like wah, wah, wah. And, and then when we got up to the top, the guy said, you motherfucker, you almost died, and I almost died trying to save you, you fucking fucker, you can't, you know, like there's something about scuba diving that I just don't understand. And then what was the most savage off-camera prank that was ever put Oh on man, you? what a great question that is. There was the one that was actually on camera, but little known about because it, it lived on a on an obscure DVD that I put up by myself. I um, filmed myself ejaculating 
onto the computer keyboard and desk of the most germaphobic producer of Jackass back in the early days of the TV show. And then I wanted to go in there and film him just typing away, <laughs> you know. Uh, but my blabbermouth, I, I had told too many people until he found out about it and really forensically cleaned everything. So when I went to film him, I filmed him giving me the most hilarious lecture ever, you know. Soon enough, as you're on your way back to Florida, when reality finally sets something, man, there's a lot of stuff I could have been doing when I was too busy jacking off on Scott's desk, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a condiment disorder, so I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna just add the Valentina. When you jump off of a 35 foot overpass from the bed of a moving truck, uh -huh. what happens beforehand? Is there physics, is there math, are there sketches? Or is it more just a grip uh, it and rip it, balls to the wall, right. whatever happens, happens mentality? There was no practicing that one because uh, it was pretty illegal. We went up on foot and scouted the bridge realizing that really you had to meet that window. You couldn't beat it early or late because you would hit uh, pylons, you know. And, I mean, it was important to get the timing right. Normally, in a situation like that, when it's a difficult thing, a dangerous thing, one, two, three, go is my tool. You know, one, two, three, go, I count that, and I have never backed out of a one, two, three, go in my life. Oh, no! All right, so let's switch gears and talk about stand-up for a wing. Cool, man. Do you remember the last time you had to kick out a heckler? I've had a pretty good run of not having to do that. I fucking hate having to do that. Yeah, I... The thing about heckling is that it kind of conjures up, just the word heckling, conjures up the image of somebody witty, somebody challenging the comic, like in a way that's kind of confrontational, and then it's the onus on the comic to be witty and shut them down with that one just brilliant sort of burn that that shames them and, and quiets them. But that's not the experience, you know. It's just some drunk guy screaming? 90% of the time, it's just drunk people, and there's just no making sense with them. With that said, I can be pretty mean. I don't like it. Uh, there have been times when, when I, when I, totally lost my cool and said, get the fuck out, get him out, you know? And, 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 and particularly with like the, the videoing with the cell phones, it's so insidious. In New Zealand, I went off on the, get her out, get her out. And uh, they wrote a fucking article about what a dick I was in New Zealand. And uh, it's like, dude, you know, here I was worried about what, like there's like, someone's gonna post a video of my show. How many people are gonna see that on this person's Facebook. A handful, but then right. when they write the story about you, everybody says that. <laughs> no, a Google search. I was the latest news about Steve-O. What a dick. <laughs> you know, yelled at a poor girl. Oh, you had your own sauce. How about that? I might do a little less dunking now. <laughs> All right, so we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, and what we do is we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram. We pull interesting pictures okay. that need more context. So I'll show I you the it. picture, and then you just tell me the bigger story. Does that sound good? You got it. All right, laptop, please. First and Ooh. foremost, what's going on <clears> in this <throat> picture? Okay, that was in St. Louis two years ago at a summer concert festival. I performed my famous double back meaning I flopped my dick and balls back and forth violently until jumping up in the air and clasping my thighs together, catching the back burger, and then pulled down my, uh, my boxer shorts, revealing the mangina to 15,000 people. I had to pixelate the dick and balls protruding from my rear. For Instagram strict guideline policy. Right, but Snapchat let that one slide. Undercover clown with Justin Bieber? It wasn't actually planned, and when we were out in clown makeup filming it in Venice, just pranking people and doing all this crazy shit, and lo and behold, that's Justin Bieber, just plain, plain day, walking. And uh, I went up to him and, and I said, yo, dude, what's up, man? And he goes, Steve-O, man, recognize you right away. And I'm like, wow, I'm like, hey, dude. So we started skateboarding in the Venice skate park together. He signed a release form to be in my video, put it out, and then, like maybe a week later, 
he was uh, all over the news for uh, making some kind of racist joke in an age-old video that had surfaced. Yeah. And there was all this negative publicity. And the very people who paid me asked me to make the video private because Justin Bieber it was like radioactive. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so all of the money they gave me was for nothing. I have one more for you. <laughs> this is an adorable picture. Nine years old. Uh, the team is called the Kendall Broncos. What's great about this isn't that picture, but that I was wearing that same uniform, shoulder pads and everything. When I went in to get my passport photo taken for my Canadian citizenship card, this is so incredible because like always as a child, I was just uncomfortable in my own skin, which is pretty par for the course for alcoholics and stuff. That's why, you know, and like I just felt that in my football uniform that I was more, I, I, I amounted to more. I always had my outfit, my, my costume that made me feel better. I wanted to grow my little mullet because I was like a heavy meddler, you know, and I had to, that was my identity. And then, and then it was like skateboarding and then it was pot and drug, you know, but always like I had to have that like identity. You were in a phase, you were, in a, you were always right, in a phase. Perpetually in a phase. I was never just comfortable being me in my own skin. Well, you look like you're comfortable in your skin. I, I've, I've made a lot of progress in that area, and I appreciate you saying it. So this one's Dirty Dicks. It's an aggressive brand name. Okay, Dirty Dicks. How about that? I once recorded a rap song called Down With STDs. It's a good name. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good hook. Dirty Dicks reminds me of that, yeah. <laughs> I recorded it on a night when I was smoking so much PCP that I actually blacked out. Came to, discovered that I had destroyed the studio. And the studio was the studio of famed gangster rap, actually named Fame of MOP. And you don't fuck with that guy. You don't break his shit. No. <laughs> I was so fucked up that night on PCP, recording down with STDs, that I lost a twenty thousand dollar Rolex, man, and for all I know, I fucking made money giving it away. Wait one sec, allow me to be unprofessional here for a sec. Do it, do it. Oh, Knoxville. Should I answer? Hell yeah, you should. Yeah, dude. Yeah, bro, dude. <laughs> hey, man. Um, I can't really talk right now because I'm doing this uh thing called Hot Ones where I eat, like, outrageously hot shit while answering salacious, ill-advised questions. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting harder than Portland, uh, than Portland cement just thinking about it. <laughs> right. And so I just uh, figured I'd answer on speakerphone to show off how I just got a call from the captain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you, you do your thing. Sounds like you're busy and... Yeah. When you're finished eating the hot ones, I'm, I'm available for you. Hey, for sure, man. I, got, I can't wait to tell you funny stories. Okay, buddy. All Good right. luck. All right. Thanks, man. All right. All right. Nice. Captain. The captain. The captain, man. So as we've talked about already, we're eating vegan wings. You've been very vocal about being an animal advocate over the last couple right. of years. Right. So I want to talk about the time that you scaled a 100-foot crane. 150. 150 Easy. foot crane over here on Sunset. Right. You were protesting SeaWorld. Right. And I remember it being pandemonium. I remember the oh emergency God. vehicles. Oh, yeah. I remember it had very much sort of like a standoff. Not only was it emergency vehicles, and, and let's just backtrack. Looking back on how dumb could I have been, right? I mean, I went to go protest SeaWorld at a random construction site nowhere <laughs> near SeaWorld. I mean, right out of the gate, we're talking stupid. 150 feet up in the air. Nobody can see your stupid fucking toy whale that high, you know, like pointless. Now I'm climbing up, enough people called 911 that by the time I got the fucking whale inflated, or shortly thereafter, there weren't just emergency responders, there were specifically, as the police report says, 80 firefighters, 18 cops, a helicopter, and a SWAT team. I had these, these artillery shells that, you know, you light them in the tube and they shoot up in the sky to make a big display. But what I did was I duct taped them to the crane itself so they did not have the opportunity to travel anywhere. 
so that when I lit them arms length away from my body, that the full blast designed to make a display in the sky is an arm's length away from me. You know, I'd be just, and I'm 100 feet up in the air just to show them that I'm gnarly. And uh, I used my inflatable whale as a shield <laughs> to, to protect me from the blast. But the problem was that the blast occurred while the police helicopter was circling around me. And it just added to a litany of fucking criminal charges, five in total. Uh, God, they threw the goddamn book at me and I deserved it, you know? I remember reading the reports at the time and you were facing something like four and a half years or something yeah. crazy like that. I know you never end up like, I know right, you right, never right, end right, up right, serving right. It never much, happens, but, but the, were you worried? Probation, jail time, like any of that, I wasn't worried about it at all. What it was was the restitution. Once you start adding up 80 fucking firefighters, 18 cops, and plus I was on the crane for a good hour and a half. I mean, fuck, helicopter circle, you gotta think restitution to the city of California. Everybody guessed, like, shit, that's gonna be 200 grand easy. You know, you gotta fucking pay that back. My dad was like, wow, that was dumb. But Knoxville, he was like, hey, uh, bud, you know, um, that's gonna be an expensive one. Hope you got a good lawyer. And I honestly don't know. I do know why I didn't just come down as soon as the first cop showed up. Is because I had promised that, uh, I think I had promised that I was gonna light fireworks really high in the air. And I had to keep my word. You, yeah, you can't <laughs> let anybody down. You can't let anybody down. <laughs> and you do this the same thing every interview. Does it get easier? So there's nothing that surprises me, you know? Okay. But I do feel it. You know, I'm human. Let's really fucking rock the boat on this one. Love it. Try to keep it off the lips too, huh? That's smart. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked up over here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Smoky. Let's talk about YouTube, because I think right. that in a lot of ways, Jackass's sort of low budget, do it yourself extremeness <coughs> really paved a way for a lot of what you see on YouTube right now. But okay. I want to talk about the stunts and the pranks specifically, because it's such a crowded, competitive, and congested space on YouTube. Right. Do you think that YouTube is pushing that sort of art forward, or is it taking a step back? Do you ever think about it? I think what made Jackass successful is that the spirit of it was very positive. I mean, granted, yeah, we were destructive, self-harm, very mean to each other, but we never targeted innocent bystanders. Right? We never um, were mean-spirited to anybody outside of us. And that is what's lost on a lot of YouTube pranksters. You know, you see a lot of mean-spirited pranks going on. And it goes by and it's wildly popular and successful and it's upsetting for me to see that. At the same time, YouTube really exploded between the second Jackass movie and the third. And by the time the third Jackass movie came around, we were scouring YouTube for ideas. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I mean, again, it's, uh, it, it's a step forward, a step backwards. There's, there's so much going on that you can't just make one uh, claim about what YouTube is good or bad for. My throat, my fucking body's telling me that I'm just gravely fucking up, but I'm gonna just do this because that's who I am. Because you're a showman, Steve. That's who I am. Because you're a showman. <sighs> Getting through them. Mega Death Sauce. I like that. It's a good name. So growing up, I know that you idolized rock stars, specifically of the 80s hair metal era. So what I've done is I've pulled up some icons from the genre. I just want to show them to you and then just get your snap reaction to them. Does that sound right? I love it. My man Tommy Lee, T-Bone. Bless his heart. I mean, I could go through the... <coughs> I could go through the whole story about how I met Motley Crue when I was a little kid. They were uh, in my town, I was 13. I called every hotel in the Yellow Pages asking for a room by the name of their manager. 
got through and was lucky enough that the brother of the manager answered and was impressed by my initiative and put me on the list for backstage passes. So there wasn't that much crazy that happened backstage that night, and I certainly didn't have anything um, pressing to ask or discuss with them. But by the virtue of the fact that I was standing next to these guys through my own sheer perseverance and initiative. It just empowered me, man. I was like, fuck, I made this happen. Here I am with Molly fucking crew. And I think that I took that attitude largely through the rest of my life, you know, with me. Like, I, got, I can fucking do anything. Were you a Sebastian Bach guy? Of course, he's notorious for uh, getting roped into a terrible contract by John Bon Jovi. I think John, John Bon Jovi should be for more fucking accountable for being a shithead dickwad fucking screwing people over business-wise. You hear about his relationship with Richie Sambora, but uh, I understand that John Bon Jovi really fucked over Sebastian Bach, and he just skates around like it didn't happen. Fuck John Bon Jovi. It already on there. So, it's funny that you say that. It's tradition around here to put a little dab on the last wing. This is another hot one sauce. It's called the last dab. A you don't have dab? to. You don't have to if that you don't want like to. That looks like more than a little dab. You don't have to if you don't want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. <sighs> I'm not gonna do a dab, I'm gonna compromise with a schmear. A schmear? We've, <laughs> we've had people schmear. We've had people schmear. Right. The schmear is a relatively popular right. workaround, and I think it's fair. Right. You don't know what's coming out of that bottle, you'd rather control that a little bit. Right. Steve, I would say this on a reaction level, you're very chill. I know that you came in here with a yeah, My dad taught me one motto in life. Mm -hmm. Always under promise and over deliver. <clears throat> Here we are at the end of our episode. Mm -hmm. God, I feel sorry for the poor guy who had to edit it. So much gold. <laughs> <laughs> Steve-O, as we've discussed today, you're a man who has long had Hollywood dreams and through oh, swimming yeah. with sharks and jumping off of buildings and putting hooks through your face, you've been able to realize those dreams. You really are a living example of how you can do anything you want in this world, and that's coming from a guy who eats chicken wings on YouTube. Holy shit, I'm like, where the fuck is the teleprompter? This guy is good. <laughs> I'm like, am I? <laughs> I'm reading it, it's all on your shirt. Dude, you're an impressive talent. I'm impressed by you. Okay, thanks, Steve. I like this as my new motto in life. It doesn't really matter what you want, it just matters how badly you want it. Well, yeah, what if you want to be an NBA player? It's never gonna happen. You know, of course there's limitations. But whatever you want to fucking do, get off your ass and start fucking doing it. And then when the ship is there, if you're ready for it, you'll be on it and you're gonna sail. And that's all the that's all you need to know. And you know what else the people need to know? What? That you made it through. That you right. cleared the board. That right. you came in and right. dominated the vegan chicken wings. Right. And now there's just one thing left to do. This camera, this camera, or this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. And I'm I'm living my life in a way where I can look myself in the mirror and and believe like I'm a good person and uh, and I have a relationship with the universe. A lot of people like to call it God, you know? And by the virtue of that fact, I can look in the mirror and see great hair, wrinkles. And I'm cool with it, man. You know? I'm cool with it, dude. I'm in a good place. Wow. <laughs> dude, I actually battled the fucking heat, consciously thinking, man, I don't want this fucking distraction fucking watering down my episode. Like, let me chew quickly. <laughs> you were really focused <laughs> on the interview. Let me chew quickly and try not to let my speech be overly affected. <sighs> Hello world, Sean Evans coming at you to say thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. We're hovering around the 3,000th ranked YouTube channel in the world. It has been a childhood dream of mine to be somewhere in the mid twos. We're so close. Help make an adult bald man's dreams come true. Please, please, please. JK, JK, no pressure. But if you do subscribe, I appreciate it.